Hey, let's talk about Matthew Vaughn. If you know, you know. He's the guy responsible for films in the Kingsman series, he did Kick-Ass, and even this little movie called Stardust, which I kind of like. He has his own unique style and way of telling stories that, when you notice it, it becomes immediately recognizable. Truly a talent. Maybe. I think. Anyway, fun fact. He was practically begging Warner Brothers to let him make a Superman movie with Henry Cavill. That didn't happen, obviously. Speaking of Superman, Henry Cavill has to be one of the most mistreated actors in the business, which is a shame considering he is both a really good actor and seems like a genuinely good dude. I think we've all been hoping that he'd get his chance in the sun, something that was genuinely as good as he was. Unfortunately, his take on Superman got dragged through the mud of a failing DCEU, and we're not going to talk about all the wrongs of Netflix's Witcher. All that to say, this guy deserves so much more than what he's gotten. So I was genuinely excited to see that Matthew Vaughn would be directing a film starring Henry Cavill. And then the movie came out, so let's talk about it. The story follows Ellie Conway, author of the extremely popular book series Argyle. After the success of book 4 in the series, she sets out to finish book 5, only to get hit with writer's block. Oh, writer's block, writer's block. Hmm, crap, I'm stuck. Oh well, maybe that's enough writing for tonight, Mr. Hay. So she decides to take a vacation to relax her mind. However, that plan goes up in flames when an actual spy sweeps her away on an adventure across the world while being chased by an evil organization that mirrors the one from her books. She's told that she's a fortune teller in a sense, and everything she writes tends to happen, which is why this evil organization is after her, until one of like a dozen twists take place and completely alters the premise. Yeah, this movie's a bit of a mess. Almost nothing about this movie works. Outside of Henry Cavill's performance, which is barely in the movie by the way, despite what the marketing would have you believe, the acting is pretty subpar on all accounts, which is a shame because this cast is really stacked with a lot of A-list actors who I know are better than this. Also, a side note, there's this one scene in the film that introduces a head spy type character. and. To no one's surprise, he's played by Samuel L. Jackson. Seriously, if I didn't already know he was in this movie, I would have not been surprised by this reveal. Him playing this character archetype is practically a given at this point. Kind of like if a kid is special and needs help getting somewhere, you know for a fact it's going to be Pedro Pascal helping them get there. The effects in this film are pretty bad, and so are the sets. The amount of times me and my friends could tell that green screen was being used is abominable. Seriously, how hard is it to just film on location? The costumes aren't bad, but they aren't good either. This, combined with the poor sets and effects, really confuses me because for those of you who don't know, this movie has a budget of about $200 million. And it looks so cheap. Strange considering this is an Apple production. Or is Apple cheat, I wouldn't know. I still have my seven-year-old Android. I guess I should talk about the narrative now, but I won't because I'm genuinely struggling to remember all that happened. This movie has so many twists and turns, it's kind of annoying. Although I guess that was the point considering this is actually a spy spoof. Just wish I knew that going in, marketing team. What I will talk about though is the comedic aspect of the movie, with the big question being, is it funny? Well, yeah, actually. To me, despite all of its glaring flaws, and the flaws are glaring, it was not as bad as the critics made it out to be, and it was actually kind of fun. Was it dumb fun? Sure. But fun nevertheless. Now I'm going to be honest with you all and say that I'm not sure if that's the film's doing or my friends and I making jokes at its expense. I think it's a bit of both. 
There is one joke, however, that is set up in the opening of the film, expanded upon throughout it, and has a massive payoff. It's the dancing while taking out goons scene. Although, I do think this movie could have been funnier if it was rated R, following in the footsteps of something like Deadpool. The dancing scene that I already mentioned would have been so much funnier if there was blood with the killings to better contrast with the weird romantic moment. I don't know if that's just my dark humor side talking, but that's how I feel. Now, before I wrap up this review, I want to discuss briefly deceptive marketing. I already mentioned marketing before, but I think it deserves to be expanded upon. The marketing for this movie painted a way different picture for what it was going to be and set expectations that it was never going to meet. This movie is a spoof, and if you're going to watch it, you need to keep that in mind. Nothing in this movie is supposed to be taken seriously. Now, does that excuse all of its other failings? No. But if it was marketed as a spoof, I think people could have set more realistic expectations for what it was going to be. The marketing made it seem like it was an action spy movie with a few comedic elements and had Henry Cavill at the forefront of every advertisement, trailer, poster, etc. Marketing a film is important, so much so that almost as much money is spent on it as it is on the actual production of the film itself. Marketing sets expectations and I can understand why so many hate this movie because of the way it was marketed. This isn't the movie they were expecting when they bought the ticket. This has become such a problem now and it only adds to the wait for it to come to streaming mindset plaguing general audiences now. Now with all of this being said, do I think this is a movie I can recommend? The answer to that is no. One, I don't think it's worth the ticket price and two, I just think there's too many flaws that outweigh the positives of this movie and because of that I just can't recommend it in good conscience. With that being said, I'm going to finish Has Been Hotel, gather my thoughts, and finish my review on it. And God knows I'm going to piss a lot of people off with that review. See you then.